Hi everybody, so today I'm going to talk about IV Push Math. This was requested by some nursing students working on their IV Push module. So there are a couple of things you have to figure out with IV Push medication. First of all, you're going to look at your order and you're going to see what does the doctor want. How many milligrams, micrograms, grams of the medication does the doctor want. Then we're going to look at the vial and we're going to see how many milligrams per ml are we going to give? So you have to find out how much do I draw up in a syringe in order to have a safe dose. Okay, so that's one math problem. The next math problem is now I have a certain volume in my syringe and it may be different than the dose because you may have diluted it or have to use a different syringe. Uh, we'll talk about that, but you need to find out how many milliliters am I going to give over a 15 second increment. Now that's how we do it at our school. There may be another method that you guys are using. But this is a safe method for any drug that you're going to give. So if you look it up in the drug book when you're out on the floor and it may have been a, a medication you've never given before, it may be something that uh, maybe you're a new grad and this, you're not, you haven't given very many IV pushes, you're going to look up in the drug book what's a safe dose and then how fast do I give, give it in a direct IV administration. Okay, so that's what it'll say in the drug book. So let's get to the math. Okay, so our first example is going to be Reglan, all right, uh, metoclopramide, and that's a pretty common drug that we give for GI motility or nausea. And we're going to go to the whiteboard here, okay. So we've got Reglan comes in 5 milligrams per ml in a vial, okay. And our normal dose for Reglan is 10 milligrams per dose. IV push Q6 hours. Okay, so that's generally what we're going to give. So we need to find out how much do we give put in our syringe to have 10 milligrams. So we want mLs, okay, and we know that 1 mL is 5 milligrams. Okay, just excuse my dog, we're outside today. Um, okay, and then we're going to give 10 milligrams per dose. So we cross out the milligrams. This gives us 2 mLs per dose. So if I draw up 2 mLs in my syringe, I'm going to have 10 milligrams of Reglan. Okay? So the, the second problem is 2 mLs in my syringe. Reglan does not have to be diluted. I'm going to give 2 mLs over 1 minute because I give 10 milligrams. You can give it a little bit faster than that, but that's going to be um, the general rule. So I'm going to give two mils over one minute, okay? But I want mLs per 15 seconds, so I need to get rid of my minutes. So I'm going to say one minute is 60 seconds. And I want to know how much am I going to give over a 15 second increment. So this gets rid of our seconds and our minutes, so this I'm going to give per 15 seconds. So this gives us 0.5 mLs every 15 seconds. Okay, so this is just, this video is just on the math, and I'll do another video on the actual procedure of giving the IV push drugs. The next drug I'm going to talk about is Pepsid. Pepsid is usually given to prevent uh, ulcers. It's a proton pump inhibitor. Pepsid comes in 10 milligrams per ml per vial, and generally we give a 20 milligram dose. Okay. Now Pepsid has to be diluted. Now you can dilute it with up to 10 ml of saline. All right. So we usually use one of those 10 ml premix syringe uh, salines, but you use whatever you have. Okay. I generally like to end up with 8 mLs because that's a lot easier to divide into 15 second increments, but you can really dilute it with whatever you would like, okay, but that's the example I'm going to give. So we give 20 milligrams per dose. So the first thing is I want to know how much am I going to draw up in my syringe. So I want mLs. I have 1 mL in 10 milligrams, okay. I'm going to give a 20 milligram dose. So this gives me 2 mLs per dose. So I'm going to pull up 2 mLs in my syringe, but I have to dilute it. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a 10 ml syringe of normal saline and I'm going to squirt out 4 mls, okay, I'm going to waste those. So I'm going to have just 6 mls left in my syringe, okay. So now I have a 6 ml syringe of saline and I'm going to now draw up the 2 mls. So now I have a syringe with 8 mls of saline. Now I'm going to give this over two minutes, okay? So I'm gonna get, because it's 20 milligrams. So that's eight mLs over two minutes. Now the math's gonna be the same as before, one minute in 60 seconds, and then 15 seconds per dose. So that gives me one mL every 15 seconds. Okay, so the next drug I'm going to talk about is solumedrol. Solumedrol is something that we give as a steroid, generally to uh, COPD patients. So solumedrol comes 125 milligrams in 2 mLs, okay? And a common dose is 60 milligrams. So if I'm going to give 60 milligrams, I need to know how much am I going to draw up. And solumedrol does not need to be diluted, but it can be. So I need to know how many mLs in my syringe, so I'm going to start with 2 mLs in 125 milligrams. And I know that I want to give 60 milligrams per dose. That gives me 0 0.96 mLs, okay? So I'm going to probably draw this up in a 1 mL syringe because that's really the best accuracy, okay? Then I'm going to need to put it into another syringe because it's very difficult to divide up 0.96 into four 15 second increments. Okay, so I'm just going to add it to, I'm going to use a 3 ml, this is almost 1 ml, so I'm going to add it to a 3 ml normal saline syringe. Okay, so I'm going to have a total of about 4 mls. Now you can't give it too slow, so if you end up giving it slower than what you're allowed to, that's safe, okay? So now I have a syringe with four mLs in it, and I wanna give this over two minutes, okay? So I'm gonna say two minutes. So one minute is 60 seconds, 15 second increments. Okay, so this, gives me 0 0.5, 0 0.5 mLs every 15 seconds, which is a lot easier to push safely um, than what you would get if you didn't dilute it. All right, Protonix is the next drug that I'm gonna talk about, and this drug is something we also use, similar to Pepsid, for uh, prevention of gastric ulcers from lying in bed in the ICU, okay? So Protonix comes in a 40 milligram powder, and then you mix it, you reconstitute it with 10 mLs of normal saline. So you end up with 10 mLs of saline in your syringe. So we're gonna give our Protonix over two minutes. So I already know how much I have in my syringe, so we can kind of skip that step. So I'm gonna give 10 mLs over two minutes. One minute is 60 seconds, 15 second increments, So this gives us 1.25 mLs. Now I'm gonna be in a 10 mL syringe, so I'm gonna end up giving 1.2 mLs because you can't get the accuracy of 1.25 uh, with the 10 mL syringe. But that just means I'm gonna give it a little bit slower and that's perfectly acceptable, that's safe nursing judgment. Our next drug is Lasix. And that's something that we're going to give for fluid overload or in order to uh, get rid of excess fluid. Lasix comes in a 40 milligram per 4 ml vial. It also comes in some other concentrations, but that's the one I'm going to work with today. We're going to give 20 milligrams. Now Lasix, if you give it too fast, patient can become deaf. It's autotoxic. So we're gonna give this over five minutes for extra safety, okay? So Lasix then, we want to give 20 milligrams. We've got to figure out how many mLs are we putting in our syringe. This is a pretty easy math problem, but sometimes we don't trust ourselves and we want to work it out. Four mLs in 40 milligrams, and I'm going to give 20 milligrams 
per dose. That gives us 2 mLs in our syringe. So now I have 2 mLs and I'm going to give that over 5 minutes. Now it could be easier for you to dilute this one as well so that it's easier to push, but I'm going to show you what it looks like if you don't dilute it. It does not have to be diluted. So we have 1 minute is 60 seconds, 15 second increments. That gives us 0.1 ml every 15 seconds. All right, so you probably would use a 3 ml syringe. Thanks.